Oh, we're back. All right. Yeah, uh, you're still. You haven't gone through yet. Oh, you're I go through. Sorry. All right, so you go through. So, so. And the door closes. We all like. <laughs> so the door closes behind you, and and you guys kind of like you all like reappear. Um, and you can kind of see like as you appear, you see like the happy face of the woman like so. Oh, so. Right. And like you can kind of tell like his at wordlessly. Yeah, like he he can kind of tell like and he just takes it and like he says. It was, it was it was necessary. It's better than what it was. It was, right? One for many. And he kinda like goes and you can see like North like kinda like mm. he kinda goes like like past his head like it's going this way. It's like North kinda like goes and lays down over there and he kinda goes back inside with the horn and he doesn't come back out. So you guys are left alone. Um we'll say for because of who he of what he is, um that hut is still there. So like his his yeah. tent is still there. Um, and you're left now, the three, the three of you, um, at the the dais in the back of his house, and it has like dim light coming from his place. And it, well, of course, he's like, in the morning, and he kind of like goes back. It's hard to like show <laughs> sadness because like he talks like this. So he like, so, my, well, yeah, my, the quieter he gets, I I assume he's, and, like, he's, he's, yeah. he's like, yeah. he got quieter, so he must feel. Quiet. Yeah, so like he's not like his like crazy self anymore, yeah. and he kind of goes back inside and shuts the door behind him, and North goes and lays in front of the door like. Mm -hmm. In front of the door, and the three you were left behind were behind this house where the guy is like, like right, like 15 feet in front of you, your left is where the door is. Yeah. It's probably, uh, I was murdering, I would say you were in the valley in the morning, but when you got back, it was like starting to become dusk, like, or it was getting darker. It's probably around like 6 30. Uh, I'm gonna go over to, uh, Nurse. Yeah. You walk over and he's just kind of sitting there, like, almost like a sad and mournful look on his face in front of the door. Uh, you tell me. Thank you. <laughs> you gotta hear, like, he like, doesn't want to go. He's like, like uh, he's like, yeah. <laughs> 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 and then you go. Summon the uh, yeah, so. <laughs> drops it. <in>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she just drops that and she's like, yep. And starts licking and telling me nothing weird happened uh, at all. I'm going to sit there and then tell, tell her the story. Okay, so you're yeah, conveying what's yeah. happened to Libby. Yeah. And you kind of see, like, while you're doing this, so we'll get back to you because you two are still outside. Yeah. As you're doing that, you kind of hear, like, Libby's almost condoning, like, like, like rubbing her head against you and trying to, like, nudge you and make you feel better. So. Okay. They're sitting there explaining that by the fire. Um, so two of you are still outside. So I walk into the dome. Yeah. Phyllis and I are wolf. Okay. Yeah. See the cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the cat like oddly like like. It's like, daily. It, well, like, yeah. yeah. It kind of like. Like that kind of gives you a look like. Mm. It's like not like happy that you're in a wolf form right now, but upon hearing basically his master almost say like it's nail and it's okay like it's like. It's like piss at you for like freaking it, 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 it unarches his back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the hair like goes down. Yeah. So yeah. I think about moving towards it and then I decide that I should and I go like spin in a circle and sit on the pile. Like, it, it kind of is like it's still like curled up in his lap. Like it's still like watching <laughs> the dog watching. Yeah. Yeah. It's still like watching you with an eye, but like it's still like a little more kind of like, like, can you handle the one slashing damage you did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you are now left outside behind the house, um, by the dais. Yeah, you're you're alone. Me? Yeah. Right, I'm sort of looking up at this. It's dusk. Yeah. Sort of. Like it's starting to get darker. You can start to see like one or two stars. I, I look up at the the one I can see. Um, oh, perception. Uh, eighteen. You see, like as you look up, you see like one shooting star shoot across the sky. I, I um. Christ. I say just sort of under my breath. I go into the hut. As you say that, you feel like almost like a warm, calming sensation, okay. like wash over you, and you and you go back into the hut. And I, I start making. Yep. And I offer everyone. Speech. I'm done. I offer everyone. I accept silently. Um, as a dire wolf, I start flapping up the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you get like a little bowl for the wolf, and you guys have your two little like teeth. I am still a wolf. Yeah. Like, so everyone's kind of like hanging out in the hut. It's probably around like after the tea and 
everything's yeah. done. And there's always like there's rations in the hut. Like there's like fruits and meats and stuff. So, like you will have food if you need it. I have, I have, I have, I have. Since I came in, I have yet to actually say a word. I'm just passing out things. Go sit in the corner. You're sitting there. It's probably like there, uh, like seven o'clock or so. Like it's starting to get darker out. More stars are starting to, like like more brightness starting to block the sky almost. And you can kind of look up through like the opaqueness of your your hut, your dome, and you can kind of see like it's starting to get darker out, and the stars are starting to like go across the sky. Yeah. Well, before it like the sun. Oh, I guess I can move me up. Doing my best to sketch. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't be that hard. You're basically drawing a horse on fire, yeah. like with that like, crackled skin, and yeah. yeah. And you feel like un almost uneasy even to draw it. Yeah, just to think, like, because it's like the, the flash is back in your mind, so it's like you're almost uneasy drawing it. But you, you know, like, see, I told you. What it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll say that. Um, Night will fall and morning will come. You may fall asleep when you would wish. So say after four hours, I yeah. Hour you come back. <laughs> yeah. Just like in your sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, Still curled up. Yeah. yeah. So night will fall and morning will come. Uh, you guys can decide what time you're waking up. And I trance and okay. well, I trance at five hours five. I trance. That's what you have to replace it with. I don't have to do it, but what about? That's unfortunate. Wait, you roll the one in your for your divination? I have a foretelling roll of 10. Too. Oh, that's awesome. Because I took the divination uh, thing. I get portent ability, which is at the end of every long rest, you roll 2d20s and I close the roll. You may re replace any roll with one of your foretold rolls. Must be replacing anything with those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the one. So I can feel yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the 10 might come in handy. It feels, that'll be good. You never um, know. Before I actually like go to bed, uh, I'm gonna roll some hit die because uh, I need this. Well, I, well, I, say, I, I, I let you know that long night will fall and morning will come okay. without any incident. Um, I don't know if you guys want to do anything else. When you start doing your trance, the nights that you've had, like almost sleepless nights, like yeah, you you've been in a trance, trance, but you've been more awake than you should have been in it, like dreaming about like finding your daughter what could you have done differently and, like just like where is she and just, like always like keeping you semi awake in your trance you find for the first time in a very 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 long 75 years uh, a peaceful calm nightmare free sleep in which you almost trance dream of you and your daughter just sitting conversing like it's, it's, you finally find peace this is where the <laughs> um all right uh, so I get up before everybody else wakes up. Yeah. yeah, so you can trance. I mean, it's seven. I gave you like whatever time you want to trance at. Um, and I go into um, uh, Mr. Woodsman. So you're going up to the door? <laughs> yeah, at like four in the morning. <laughs> well, is it four? Um, well, we trance. That's true. Um, sure you want to walk to the door? Just like what time? What time? Uh, about five thirty. Alright, so 5.30, you're up and walk the door. Did you, did you want to do anything at night before you went to bed? Or? Uh, I was just going to say, for fun of these, I have a deck of cards. And I'm sitting there. And I was trying to think of a game, but I can't think of any, where like I would be sitting across from Libby, but like her cards are face down, and it's like... You play Concentration with her. You know what? what yeah. Like War, but or Spit, but like... Well, not... Concentration, like where you flip over one, and yeah. uh, you have to remember where the other one is, and she can just paw the cards. Yeah, okay. thinks the other one is. So I'm doing that with Lynn. Roll a perception check. I, I was kind of figuring out how I wanted to do this. Really to do it. Yeah. It's just how it is. Uh, a natural one or five. So five? Five total. Yeah. So you look up and you see that there is currently a full moon in the sky right now. Mm -hmm. And it's probably around like the two. He's tranced. You're asleep in the corner. It's just you and Lynn kind of concentrating, like yeah. psychically playing cards with each other. Yeah. And you see through um, the door comes in this burly, large, Hairy man, um, and, into the tent. Into the tent. Yeah, yeah, and he kind of holds up his hand, and you kind of have like a familiar sense about him. I'm like, and he just kind of sits down, and he sits next to Libby, and he picks up half the cards, and he just starts playing cards. <laughs> he kind of gives you look like. <clears throat> he kind of starts playing cards with you. Right. He kind of goes, "A name, wife, come to love," and starts playing cards with you. Holy so, shit! You're the only one awake. The two of you were out. Son of a bitch! That's fine. That's fine. 
That's fine. So over the course of the night, he explains that usually um, when they embrace, like on a full moon, when they change. Um, so what happened was it was basically like a strong, strong enchantment that happened to his, his name. Actually, was like uh, dark. Yeah, all right, so no, he was known as Nard. Um, and he's like a big, burly, like almost like yeah. ogre, like he's just a big just human. Sick. Yeah, and but he seems like like calm and nice, like he like, like, almost like round edges to his face. Yeah. He seems like a nice guy. So he comes in and he explains to you over the course of the night that like something had happened and he had wandered too far into the woods one day and uh, he, he was magically transformed into a rare bear. Okay. So they attacked him as he, he, he woke up and he was this giant bear form like thing. So and I ask him, is, is that the opposite of werewolves? Who's so he basically explains that, like, usually at night. when you get bit, you become at night, you become a beast in a full moon. He says that he was never bit, like, he was an enchantment of sorts, and they hadn't found a means to break it. That the woodsman found him and that he offered to help him because he saw that like he was troubled and basically right. the woodsman took him in they've been together for years and years and years and helping them trying to find a cure and so he's basically explaining to you that like right. it's almost like he on, the only time he gets to regain his human form is right. once in a full moon only for a few hours and he wants to enjoy just sitting and enjoying something he can never do as the wearer uh i'm gonna get up and brew something and he kind of like nods and like that's just too good he kind of like <laughs> what is it yeah he's like, yeah it's, it's like I, what did you say? Oh, uh, he said that he only gets to enjoy being a human for a couple hours once per full moon. So I'm going to brew him tea on your set while you're asleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he kind of like, <laughs> I, a, I could use a good cup. You know, kind of like sitting down. He's like, your cat's kind of like nudging up next to him and he's kind of like, Elvin is really expensive and old. Very good. <laughs> so like he like, super dank. He like brew the tea and you guys have been together for about two hours talking and right. like and, right. and he's sipping the tea and he kind of says like, Thank you. And like just like go sitting and sitting like quietly, just like enjoying the time that he had. Like as the night progresses, um, after a few hours, he goes. Yeah. I was gonna point out like. Yeah, that's like you, while you're conversing. Yeah. So it's probably been like three hours. Like so, right before he would have woken up, he's like, "I need to see him first. And he kind of says, "Thank you for, for everything, all of you." Kind of gets up and gives you a nod. And, He's out of tent and kind of hear the door of the hut close and goes and talk to the the woodsman. Yeah. And so it'd been about like five hours. It's probably like. And then it falls. Yeah. We'll say you still get your four up. Yeah. Um, um, But yeah, so like this is about, he goes in about an hour and a half before you uh, wake up and come out of your trance. So So you're asleep, you're out, you're living. He said that little experience, and then you wake from your trance. Right, I head in. Outside the door is uh, is Narf sitting outside, and he kind of gives you a little bit. He kind of says, knock, and then puts his head back down. Cool. <laughs> and I, uh, oh. times. Right, yeah. On the ceiling if you want me. Oh, I saw on the pipe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so you go in and kind of oh yes, yeah, I see you. I, I I think I think I'm done. Uh, I'm going to be honest, there's there's no real way to be sure, but I'm no no I'm pretty sure this will work. This will work. This will work. Mister like, Woodsman, oh. I am completely confident. Well, um, thank you. I was yeah. I was wondering if yes. uh, who could help me. Prepare a breakfast. I feel what we are about to do is going to be very dangerous. I would like one jovial morning on this. I feel different. I would just like to prepare something grandiose for my fellows uh, before they wake up. I think I know just the thing. And he kind of says, come just me with me. And he kind of says, Narth, Narth. And like he, he goes around back and um, he goes into the hut where everybody's sleeping. It's a big it's a big dome from the inside, and he kind of sits there. He straightens up again. He concentrates and almost like out of nowhere, like like appears this like like seven foot long table full of meats and eggs and like berry wines and juices. And he basically like made a breakfast. He's like and he kind of goes like I think I'll do it, Mister Woodsman. You are outstanding. 
Thank you. So he kind of like plopped himself down and, and North kind of like, like weaseled his way into like the dome. He's a big bear, but <laughs> yeah. he kind of like squeezed himself and he sits like right next to the woodsman on his like bear butt. And he like, he kind of had like some meats that he's getting to eat. Like, like you kind of see that he's like giving the most like the meats and stuff. So it's probably about like 630 at this point. And you can, yeah, and you kind of hear like, both of you kind of woken up by like the clang of like plates. Yeah. <laughs> and like you wake up and you see kind of like, you see at the head of the table is the woodsman next to him is North. Like wherever you want to sit is um, the professor. I'm sitting next to the wood. To so the left is the professor. It's like a six to seven foot long table full of like anything you kind of want. And it seems like no matter what you take, it's like nothing is missing. Yeah. Like I'm eating it and I'm just absolutely amazing while just. I've always been a fan of breakfast myself. Yeah. Oh, breakfast is. I'm a fan of the cheeses. Where, where did this come from? Come sit, sit, sit. You, yeah, I get off by You're going to need your friends. Yeah, like you sit down and start eating whatever what you want. We're, what we're about to do is going to be very dangerous. Um, I, I feel a new resolve with it. I mean, share this moment. You did this, Professor? Oh, no, no. Oh, himself. No. All by himself. What? <laughs> the woodsman the woods basically goes like, all by himself. Wow. Oh, I just sort of like look at the. They kind of give you like a. <laughs> he gives like kind of like like a little smile. Like, okay. He doesn't like really want any recognition just, for what he did. Yeah, I just like ignore like, what he decided. I'm doing like, like, like a hangover breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> like eggs and sausages and bacon and just like Very berries. Very yeah, well. Seeing as you know, I get stabbed by a <laughs> like, oh, with uh, yeah, <laughs> he fucking casts like he like he's like an elemental monk and he uses elemental attunement to cast fire in him to warm up his breakfast because he was hungover. Because I slept through breakfast and my food was cold. Because I, so I came down hungover in the tavern and just like, uh, like that was because I add drank him and the other guy in the bar. Yeah, well, I had that issue with my life too. It was great, but it so, worked because no one really knew that I was elemental yet. So then I was just like, uh, super hungover. Well, they knew from the the yeah. finishing move, but we got to talk about it. Yeah. So like um you guys are all sitting around having breakfast, it's probably about like seven thirty now, you guys are all kinda of like finishing up like you ate your full like the table is still completely full of stuff. Yeah. Um and he says, So, uh two pressing matters. Um, I think that I've done it. And he pulls out this like little circular stone disc. Uh it's about a foot in diameter and about like four inches wide, and he plops it on the table and almost like like seems to pulse in a weird way. It's like So you just should rip open uh the mist. Um, it should do the trick. Uh, any questions? Uh, well, I'm eating off. That's fine. What, uh, you said rip open the mist? Yeah. So, the way that it works is you're going to place it on the ground. Uh, uh, you don't have to do anything. You literally just place it on the ground. You think of Scott, and I'm going to sell you. And then it's going to rip a uh, opening between the planes. And you are going to briefly cross between the planes, and you're going to cross through the mist. Okay. And that should leave an opening in the mist. Oh, I see. So like, you're basically saying like you're blinking in I, I and look, out. I look to the professor for an explanation. <laughs> and basically, what you gather is he's, he, <laughs> I mean, he's, I know, you don't I know, know what, you don't know what plane you're crossing into. He's basically saying you're leaving the material for a brief second as you step through the portal, and it's literally on the opposite side of that mist. It's going to dump you out, and the portal should stay open for as long as you need. Samson, planar theory uh, seems to seems that all his calculations are correct. Um, actually, yeah, quite astounding. Right here. Huh? Uh, Woodsman was saying he has all the plans out here. Oh, it, it is it is something we've toyed toyed with. I, I it's amazing. I haven't taken that class yet. You're, even, you're not even, you're half elven, so it doesn't matter. He's like, <laughs> oh, it lives that long. He's like, that's a, that's a long shot. Okay. Woodsman, is there anything else you can tell us about what we might face on the inside? So, uh... Can we describe? Oh, I wouldn't. I, he kind of is like, I've, I've tried to see... What is beyond the mist, and even my vision has been clouded. That's pretty much 
cheese. Um, <laughs> well, what we're looking for dealing with indeed. Right. Know that much. Yeah. No, I knew that. Uh, Stitches focus their life force in phylactery, which I explained to you. Yep, yeah, so I knew that too. Yep. Um, for the benefit of people who weren't here, <laughs> the goal is to defeat the Lich and free Heromaya. Doing so, you should probably want to find the phylactery, destroy it to ensure that he does not return. It comes here. Yeah, that's a small favor. So you got any free town in front. Yeah, I gather that the small favor is not exactly a small It's a small town, it's a small mundane. favor. It's mundane. It's a mundane task. It's okay. It's a, a little above mundane. I imagine we'll do like this. Let's jump up on the table. Laughing. Yeah. There's like some milk. Yeah. 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 So as as you guys are talking, and you're kind of explaining everything. You you hear um like right outside the hut. You you don't really see it as it seems to be coming in front of the house. Like you to be obscured. Yeah. And all you all this is like it's transparent. You can fit it. all of them, no yeah. problem. Um, so you hear a voice, Darren, Darren, are you there? And like slamming on the door, you, oh, oh, that's right. One second, and it, and it comes out, and, and you kind of see like he goes in front of him and pulls around a, a hooded humanoid or human figure, put up, dressed in all black. And he's like, he's like dragging him, and he's like kind of like like yeah, he's like so. Uh, yeah, he's like, what's something I forgot to remember? Uh, this is Nathaniel of uh, uh, Nathaniel Pelrose. Pelrose? Immediately, like. No, no, I don't no, shoot him. It's fine. I just, just, just control like, You see him, like, reach out his side, like, be ready for you to. Samson. And he's, like, looking at you, like, just kind of like you're both, like, locked yeah. eye, like, and he's like, no, it's I, fine, it's fine, it's fine. He's, like, I, he's, I stand up and I, uh, I'm sorry for what you must be going through. So he kind of like relaxed too, but his hand is still clutching, still there, yeah. clutching at his side. He has like two short swords on his side. It's okay. still clutching at the one like ready to pull it out. And he's kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like Yo, uh, one thing I forgot to remember. This is Nathaniel. Um, uh, Nathaniel is Byron's son. Not Isabel's. It's Byron's son. So uh, the only person that I've had communication with other than your noble friend is Nathaniel. Uh, Nathaniel, why don't you ex explain? And so he's kind of like, like shy, like, I can't, I start, I forgot something. Like <laughs> so <laughs> Nathaniel kind of looks at him, he's like, he kind of like relaxes his yeah. grip on himself. And he like, well, I see the woodsman kind of trusts him. Yeah, so it's like, I'll put my hand on As you've heard, my name is Nathaniel Pellerose, son of Byron Pellerose. Well, the ex Byron Pellerose. That's because I'm around with the words from Yeah, Byron Pellerose. <laughs> uh, so he basically, like, for not him explaining it, but like, just to be quick, um, he basically explains that Byron had him um, with another woman, like his adult parent. Um, so it is Byron's son. Okay. This is Bell's Baron. Um, and when she felt ill, like, Byron was very good about raising Nathaniel. He was very open about what had happened, and he embraced Nathaniel as basically his own son, raised him as his own son. And over the years, Nathaniel's probably, um, he's about like 27, 28, like older like adult, not older, but like uh, younger adult. Uh, fit, um, not like skinny, but like fit in good shape, about 5'10", short blonde hair, clean shaven, and like one single scar across his right eye. Um, that seemed to like been there a while, so I feel pretty well. So basically, it's like he had him like with another woman. Byron basically brought him in his son, trained him, raised him as his son. Um, and then over the like the course of the year of when Isabel got sick, Byron started to go mad and push Nathaniel away. And over time, Nathaniel started to become more and more distant with Byron. Towards the end, he basically explains like he was there for the blast. Um, the last thing he remembers is darkness. Um, but he woke up normal um, with Byron sitting next to him. And Byron explained what he had done and basically just saved Isabel, like he gave his own. And as he said, like, he explains, like, I, I remember seeing him, like, his skin was falling off his face. I remember him telling me it's going to be all right and nothing will happen to him. He gave me free realm of the city, and I left the keep. Like, everybody was screaming, but sleep. He kind of explains that, like, he has free range of this town, like, nothing will happen to him. And he's kind of found means to escape 
uh, in and out of the town uh, without kind of being known to Byron because he's so consumed in the keep. And he's kind of been in and out of places and has maintained contact recently. It's only been like four days since all this happened. Yeah. Maintained contact with the woodsman whose name is, is J. Nope, that's not it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's Darren. It is Darren. Darren, Darren yeah. It seems like I made contact with Darren, which now you kind of understand, like the woodsman original name was Darren. Yeah. Um, before he, whatever. You know, crazy. Yeah, that's right. Um, so he kind of says that, like, I've been given free reign, and like, that man is no longer my father. That that man dead to me. Yeah, and he kind of says, like, you, know, like, you can almost like the sadness and anger in his face, and what he did to those people was horrible. Horrible. Do you witness when he's sacrificed or death? Or whatever which witches do? I witnessed the beginning. And then you said whatever witches do? Yes. So it's like, I witnessed the beginning. Not sure if he was a lich or not, but I, I do remember, like I said, skin was falling off of his face. And I remember being terrified, but calm by him. He was my father. I had not spoken to him in quite some time for his madness. I just remember that and I remember running out of the keep, scared but oddly calm. I remember seeing everybody sleep but screaming the entire town. I remember we things, that from Terry. things flying overhead and, That's and yeah. So things flying overhead and, and, and creatures roaming the streets and th there was a man I remember talking to my father. I can't think of a name. Um, I believe he was the one who helped my father accomplish this goal. He basically he saw like a man like, towards the end, like try to like go up, and he was busy to keep on off on up, and then finally like took the explosion of black and the mist came over the town. Oh, I uh. Isabella dead or alive? As far as I know, she's still alive. So it worked. I don't know if it works. I haven't seen Isabel in yeah, like four days. The last I've seen, she was still in the living. Now, though, I, I show him don't know anything for sure. I take the note out that we got from uh, the boy that I'm reading. Does this look like your father's work? So you, you, this is the first time you've taken the note out since then, right? So you like, did you have it? it? No, no. Who had the note? Um, I think I handed it. I handed it back to you to show you the blood magic. I don't know. She. Yeah. yeah. So you have it. Out, yeah. So like, this is the first time you don't scroll it, right? Yes. Okay. So he looks at it like, who, who is to to lure, Who is this? And he turns around. You just see the original note that he wrote. There's nothing else on it. It's the original note that he wrote. No, no, the one the boy gave us. Not the telescription. Oh. I said, it's just like your father. Yeah. Your father gave that out. Um, oh, well. Yeah. I gave that to him. Yeah. All right. So you give that to him, and he kind of looks at it, and it's like, I mean, it's still like legible, but it's like not as legible now. Yeah. It's dried out, and caves are falling. Yeah. But I, I don't know for sure, but it seems like this handwriting. That looks like it. Blood? Yes. I, I did feel for my father's sanity. I, we need to stop him. I agree. I think we all agree. I warn you, the town is a very dangerous place now. Things that I've never seen before flying overhead and shambling through the streets. And that man, I, I know where the man is, but. It's a dangerous, dangerous place now. The man that aided your father? Yes, he lives below the keep now. Always experimenting with things. Things coming out of the keep. Unnatural creatures. Let's go off the man's food. I like it. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. There are, there are things that we must accomplish. Killing the lich is only possible by finding him back to Must know where he where he has put his soul. Keeping for 
the man will the man will know his name. And he gives me the Yabard Thon. E O E O B A R D Thon. E O B A R D. Thon T H O. Now he's watching my TV channel. T H O N. Disappointed in both of you. I, I spelled disappointed. it like um, I spelled it like the Flash song. Nah, uh, Jack nods in agreement. I'm no longer disappointed in you. Okay. That's a cool name. E Bart Thon's a badass name. Yeah, it's a fucking badass name. I love that name. It's Reverse Flash. It is. Yeah, just like the man, name. It's E Bart Thon. He'll know where it's kept. I have been told to watch that, and I really just don't have time. Um, what can you tell us about you? Is he, what is he human? A human, an older man, uh, middle middle of his years, middle ages. Um, what he can do, I don't know. I just know things come from where he resides, unnatural things. You kind of gather that like, from his like demeanor and the two shorts, like he's kind of like a more roguish archetype, and you kind of like have been down there before, but never to where he lives and resides. I've seen the things come out of there, but never what he's doing in there. And where does your father reside? The top of the keep. Near a tower. It's more like a square and keep, right. and he's like within the top of the keep. He, Walk you around the city. I can't guarantee safety, um, as the creatures never harm me. Yes. If you're granted passage, are we accepted as your guests? Or? I I fear any I do anyone not. other than Ilbard. So uh, definitely, be the minute we cross over this mist, uh, must be on guard at all times. Yeah. If it says I can get you into the keep. To the bottom. You can either fight my father directly or fight Thon first. I, w- I am not a fight to fight him directly. And yes. That's just like, Thon it is. I do, however, have some defenses. You'll need them. I will have a defense of my choosing. We'll discuss this later. Trust. I give you a quiz. Quizical? Yeah. There's a quiz. Yeah, he's yeah. like, I have a way myself into the city as the mist is messing to harm me. Do you have a way in? And then I'll be, yep, you're going to be okay. You got your way in. <laughs> God, I love you. <laughs> yeah, this guy. They're going to be fine. We're good. Yeah. Uh, and he says, like, I trust you, Jaren. He's like, yep, you're going to be just fine. I don't. Uh, yeah, don't. He's like, uh, you, you haven't been to Avard's chambers. He's been like in the floor that he resides on to see the things that are coming in up and never actually in the Um. Uh, so he basically said, like, I'm, I'm ready. Have you ever go, we met? Professor, I may have an idea. Yes. Um, and this is David. May I call you that? That's a name I haven't heard in some time. Yes, I think I think David will work. I, I would like to <laughs> I would like to uh, address someone of your caliber with a name that is deserving, so if if, if you're fine with me. We are about to head into uh, something that you have done way more than possible for me. All oh, mundane day's work. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, if you were to happen to have. Uh, we met some trouble along the way. Some mundane tasks. 
and uh, I would like to uh, restock some supplies. Um, I was wondering if you might have something in the wonderful chemistry set that is your house. <laughs> I, I see you guys just the same. It kind of scurries off and comes back like two minutes later with like a like a bath like a crate full of like potions. He's like <laughs> kind of like rummaging through me like this one, this one, this one, this one. It kind of like and like smells like yep. You got this one, this one. Like, yep, this one. And he kind of lays out before you. Um, he kind of like separates things and he goes. Um, these will heal and he kind of pushes two ahead of you and you recognize these as the. Oh shit potions that you were given by it's two more shit potions. Two oh shit potions. Each or two? Each. Each. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Damn. I have two OS points. Yeah. So you take two of those. Um, and he says, and he, and he looks at Nathaniel, and Nathaniel kind of nods and takes two himself. And he kind of rummaging through and he kind of puts um, a green one in front of you, a red one in front of you, a blue one in front of you, and a black one in front of Nathaniel. You got the blue one. Got the blue one? Yeah. So he goes to explain, like, so, these are something that, I mean, last night, uh, thinking that you might need a little bit of help on the journey. Um, so, basically, each of these potions has to do with, basically, your uh, attunement, almost. Um, green for nature, red for the fire that you've been casting, blue for your frost, and black for Nathaniel's, like, you basically got to use a rope. Right. So, you basically said, these are pretty, pretty, pretty powerful potions, one time use. Um, drink it. Um, you basically spend on your next um, attack or spell that you drink this potion before. It's counted as a free action to drink it. So your next standard action that you use that it is with that element. Bonus or for free? You drink it for as a bonus. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's a different thing. So you drink it as a bonus, like to drink like a regular yeah. potion. Yeah. And then if you use something with nature, fire, frost, or like a roguish thing, um, you get double damage. One no, time. She is. One time. And you have to drink it before you roll to attack. You have to drink it before you do anything. Before you so if you fuck up, you use it. Yeah. It's not like on your first hit. It's like you use it and hope for the best. Yeah. It's like just only in case of emergencies. Use some wine. Kind of looks at Nathaniel and says that basically like he'll give him like double damage on like whatever he is. Like, Would it be uh, like the way crit works? Like roll damage times two? Yeah. Or just like that. Double dice. Roll damage times two. Is it 16 d6? No. <laughs> It's like, it's, like a it's, it's like an automatic, like, yeah. it's not A20, but it's 20 down. Yeah. yeah. So he gives you those. And um, I look at him. Uh, so, is there any way that I can get uh, similar armor to uh, Fuzzy over there? And I go to there. See, I can do something as bad because I'm tired of being squishy. <laughs> and he, like, looks at him. I hope you, like, say that over here. Yeah, he looks at you. <laughs> and he looks at him. He looks at you. He's like, mm -hmm. For you. And he kind of like counts over and he looks at you and he stands you up and he kind of like sizes you up. He's like, uh, and he rubs his hands and he kind of like, like, like quickly like moves his hands over you and you kind of like, and like all over you appear like this natural, like almost like it looks like that, like natural, like it's like almost wood armor. Yeah. And he goes, yep. And he, and he takes one of the knives that's in like on the table and just like stabs you with it. <laughs> It has no problem deflecting. It has like no problem deflecting. Yeah. Like, yep, can you do it? And he kind of like brushes his hands. Like over you is like almost like this like natural fitting, like almost like wood shaped armor, and it gives you another plus three to your AC. Hey. Yes. Uh, okay. If I survive this, I'm just gonna live my retirement. I feel there's much more that you can teach me than I can ever learn at the. Okay. Uh, well. Professor, we know our telescription scrolls don't work here, which I explain. I tell the woods with that story that we that I show it to him. Uh, I take it out and I, tell, I explain. Uh, we we have a scroll of telescription from the Greenbrier uh, Collective. If we needed aid, and we sent one earlier, and it came back like this. You unroll it, and it's just, it's just basically the writing. You don't see any of the blood or anything else. You look at it, like, look, pretty normal. Pretty mundane. He turns it, just like the normal. Yeah. There's no like blood or anything else. It's just the normal it's thing that he wrote. He wrote his yeah. original message. He's like, Professor. He's like, you say it came back in blood? D Darren, it came back almost in instantaneously, uh, written in blood with a threat that no one can help us. Yeah, that's. It is intercepted. 
And that's probably to work with that Sean character. Give me one second. He kind of like roams around the pack next to him. He pulls out um, the same amount of paper that he had, but like green. Okay. And he, and he kind of like looks over him and he kind of like rubs his hand over him and then like glow green for a second. And he's like, it's your work. And he gives him, he basically explains like, you should go to the, the uh, Greenbrier. Greenbrier, like no problem. Like they should not be intercepted. You had it set to rumbles. Yeah. <laughs> like he basically explained, like you were probably getting interview, like you were sending, like yeah. almost in a way mundane tell scripted things, so like yeah. very easy for any yeah. strong match user to intercept. Yeah. And he gave you ones that are specifically attuned to. Oh, uh, we were using the open wireless. We should have been using <laughs> open wireless. Yeah, it was like A equals A, B equals B. You need a new code. Yeah. Yeah, we need WPA two. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So I, I, we should tell them now, we, while we, before we go. Yes, please. Uh, uh, hand me the um, description. Hand it to you. Greenbrier Collective. Stop. <laughs> I told you, that's how I write these things. <laughs> that's um, it's, it's no use overflowing the words in, in a situation like this. Yeah. A lich has taken Heromaya. Stop. <laughs> Request immediate assistance. Stop. <laughs> Infiltrating city now. Stop. <laughs> Yours. <laughs> Belethril Adar Telendreo. I'm gonna get changes every time you well, say it. Well, it's the, the last part. Belethril, shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to think at the same time. It's like in Young Frankenstein. <laughs> oh, what it's Frankenstein! <laughs> what up? What up? Um, <laughs> Master <laughs> Professor, Evocation. Uh, I roll it up. And, and like just paste it in the atmosphere. Um, and like after you guys are talking about kind of like the plan of what you're going to do, and he'll get you in the city. And like he can, get, he, he can go if you miss, and apparently you have a way in the city. Uh, you'll have to make your way to Thon first, is what you guys want to do. What, what did you see the thing look like? The thing that the. Was for us, it was like a like one foot diameter, like almost stone disc, about like oh, four okay. inches wide. It was like put it on the ground where you want to step through the ice, and we'll go through it on the ground. And so about like three minutes later, just like it like comes back in front of you. <laughs> yeah. And so you see on the letter, basically like almost the same fashion, like very flowing writing is from the head of the Greenbrier Collective. Uh, I don't know it. Uh, Durian. Just Durian Clater. D U R I N C L A Y T E R. It's from Durian himself. And he kind of opens it up and he says, Dear Professor, I under well, I never really fucking read it like that. Yeah. It's like, you're like, yeah. My dearest <laughs> professor, yeah. it's been. Suddenly we hear a voice yeah, over. It's been four years since the Great War, right? <laughs> I do miss you so dearly. I do declare. I don't know what that is, My love for you is never ending. <laughs> So basically, he said in the letter, like he, he said that due to all the recent magical things that have been going on, like he he's he stretched pretty thin. You can get somebody out there in like four days, five days, when somebody returns. But like he 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 really is. He basically says like if you if you can wait, wait. Um, but that's the only thing I'll be I'll be able to send you some time. Like that's all I can do. Yeah. At least they know what's going on. How many of these do we have? Uh, you have four more now. One more. I'm like, like, like some Durian. Like eating, like yeah. like discussing you, like you're kind of finding background out. I understand completely. There is no time. Must make haste. Uh, if you receive this, not return. Um, send help. If I am dead, uh, I leave everything. I have to a room of where, where, where does he live? He's basically like the the woodsman in Arenville. In woodsman of Arenville, uh, he has a friend. Um, Nate, friend. What, what's his? What's the bear? Oh, uh, North N A R T H. He has a friend North. I'm not sure what exactly is wrong, but there is something amiss with him. If we are unable to return, please investigate further. Uh, 
assign it and let it go. Um, so, yeah, you're still talking, like, yeah, like, she was like, I get in front of you if you're somebody, and he basically says, like, there is Professor. Um, get fucked. Yeah. <laughs> LOL, R E K T. Yeah. Tyrannosaurus Rex is checked off. Yeah. <laughs> LOL, LOL, 360 notes go bitch. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, so he basically is like, Dear Professor, like, um, I hope you understand that I will do everything in my power to send you as much help as I can when I can. Um, I, I wish you the best of luck, um, you and your compatriots, and I hope that, you know, we do not have to bring back a body. And then, like, towards the end, you kind of see, like, and then at the end of it, you see, like, um, I will make sure that all your belongings go to um, the Woodsman of Ironville, and we will, without a doubt, investigate this man, Nard. Um, and then, like, towards the end, he says, and, like, you kind of, like, weren't, you were, like, pretty good friends with this guy. Like, you knew him pretty well. Like, this is, like, the head of the collective, and you're, like, yeah, a pretty good sure. You're, like, a tenured professor there, basically. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So we've, had, the, we've, like, had tea, we've had tea together. Oh, of course. Yeah. So, like, he's writing also, like, the like, just know she loves you very much, and then the science is named. That's enough. Okay. Uh, professor, well, like, out of our, out of, out of character, uh, Dustin, when you were writing your second note and you mentioned Nard, were you saying that out loud, or were you just telling Jack? Um, I pretty much mumble everything I write. Okay. I was so just if, make... you, if you could hear what I was saying, then I'll... Bro, oh, oh, Seth, we'll save you here. You're like sitting across the table, probably. That is a cute. Yeah, you're going to hear. Okay. So he's like mumbling and like, no, no, not, something's not right about it. And like, yeah. like mumbling and like writing himself. Um, uh, I just kind of like look to Nard and give him like a little knowing smile. You kind of... Smile. Okay, a that's all. I just wanted to see if I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What flavor? Yeah. What flavor saver? Yeah. Uh, talking better. There's something going on. Something's happening. <laughs> There's uh, so what? What? So Thaya basically says, he'll be, like he'll go with you to the mist. He has his way in. Apparently, you have your own way in. And once you're inside the city, he, he can hopefully get you there. At least to the basement of the keep safe, but he can't guarantee that he can go in with you. Um, but if he can, he will, because he wants to do everything basically he can to stop his father. Um, but he doesn't want his father to know that he's gone missing. Like, he doesn't want him to realize that he's been going in and out of the city. But basically, he was granted life and pardon because he's Byron's son. Sorry. Byron still remembers that. So he let him live and he wasn't affected by anything. So he doesn't want his thing to be like, he doesn't want to go unnoticed for too long. Like, I, I'll, I will get you to the keep and the basement of the keep. And if I can help, I will. So he basically says, like, on your on your leave, like, I'm, I'm ready to go. Like, you should probably go as soon as you can. I don't want you to risk, risk your life, but find out any information about the collector. Can't get it if you can I think we're ready. Yeah. Well, you guys gather up your things and say goodbye to Narth and to the woodsman. Narth isn't coming? No, Narth, Narth is saying nothing. Narth, like, basically, he, he expresses that he, he would not be of much use against like, these magical creatures uh, of the woodsman. Like, I just said Narth, but I'm not even. You know, like, he kind of like his voice stands up. He, he doesn't want to sacrifice Narth, basically. Because he right. knows, like, Narth, he's a big bear, but, like, it's safer for him in the woods. Right. Um, so basically, like, you're trading Narc for Home Dinner Man. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then. It's what we do. Like, if I'm already in Yeah. Uh, okay. Before we exit, or before I exit, or go, uh, I go over to Narc. And I, uh, speak a little scratch under the chin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I tell him, uh, I wish you the best of luck. Like, you do, like, in the back of my life. Was not. Thank you. I take the deck of cards that I had and I leave on the table. And I go out. You see, like in a weird way, like it's almost like you don't. You're not sure, but you think you Can see. Can cry? You think you see a tear. <laughs> <laughs> a tear well up in his eye. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean? Are you two are like? Are you two like bombing out? Yeah, I kind of do the same thing as on the way out. I kind of like ruffle mm. the bear's fur and head out. We're leaving Darren behind, right? Yeah. Yeah, Darren and Narth are staying. Nathaniel's going with the three of you. I would like to expressly uh, express my gratitude to Darren. It has been a pleasure, Darren. Uh, I, I hope we see you again. It was lovely meeting you as well. I'm, I'm sure our paths will cross again. 
And he kind of like, he gives you like a little hug goodbye. Like he's a shorter man, but he hugs you and he says, he's well, oh no, Brent, Brent, he's a, he's a human. He's like, well, if you need anything and if you survive, you know where to find me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And maybe, um, when, if you're working with stuff that's exploding, put outside. Yeah, I never thought about that. That's a pretty good idea. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, exploding stuff outside. And he closes it and he puts it. Like, Thanks! You seem like really satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought about that. Kind of writes it down. He's like, yeah, exploding stuff outside. Right. Ellie? So I'll say that you guys don't go through the city of Orangeville. You kind of go like a more direct route towards Harmire. Mm -hmm. And you. Yeah, you basically get within. You're now a travel like, montage. Yeah. And then, nah, like, like oh, fighting sure. bandits on the road and like, yeah. So you guys basically like get to Haramai. Like you can basically see as you walk up, it's like um, bigger than Arnville, the city. Um, you can't really see to the green mist. You see like shapes and outlines. You can kind of make out of the biggest shape is most likely Haramai Keep. You see that like shadow in the distance. Okay. It's basically surrounded by forest walls all around the city. Um, and like they look almost dilapidated and crumbled. Um, but the yes. rest of the shaft, yeah, but the rest of the shaft is something like, straighter. You can kind of tell the walls look a little crumbled down. Um, and the town says, like, inside. And like he kind of starts walking towards the mist. Okay. Um, can I judge? Well, you're at like 50 feet from the mist. No, the mist to the city itself. Uh, you can kind of see like the, the edge of the mist of the wall, and like ten or fifteen feet. Like, it is like literally it comes oh, it's to the right city. There. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Before we go in, I have perhaps a little trace. Okay. However, I also have enhance ability, and if I cast it high enough, I can cast it on both of you. And. Give you something. Uh, temporary hit points, strength, uh, dex, charisma, intelligence, or wisdom. Like advantage on those touch checks. Yeah. So, so you can say, like, oh, like, what you need, but get you inside. You guys can kind of do everything. Um, no, both concentration, though. So I need to, yeah, at least for the community. Right. Uh, turn to the professor. So all that food we ate, do we get, is anything happening because of that? <laughs> no? You just had a breakfast. No, I was just You didn't get any groceries. Okay. Just breakfast. Oh, funny. Uh, so, <laughs> hey, Lynn. Uh, I mean, we're gonna be crossing through a plane to get into the city at least, right? We know that's what it's called. Yeah. So, I mean, perhaps passing out of trace isn't necessary right now. Well, I mean, I'm just talking about in general. Like, oh, even. Oh. Well, you must concentrate on it. Just cast ability, right? Yeah, I have to do concentrate on both. So I can cast one at a time. I think we should just worry about getting. Okay, so then maybe once we get through and onto the other side, like through the yeah, mist. I feel like once we're yeah, I think once we're in the city, fighting things. Is... Okay. Well then, let's see if this device works. Yeah. Let's see what happens. That'll... Can I use mage hand to move it to the mist right where we need to put it? Yeah. Sure. And move it towards the mist, like right, like kind of where the mist starts almost, and you drop it on the ground. Yeah, because I don't want to risk anyone getting too close to this one. Okay. I guess it'd be real quick. Well, if he's doing it, I'm doing it. Uh, I'll, I'll go if he's done. Everyone just keep quick. You have fun? Yeah, I miss playing because I DM for them. Yeah, you guys do your head mess per session, right? Yep. Yeah. So I don't really get a chance to. Play. I have um, a crew, like a group of friends um, from my high school that we play the raw college right now. Mm. So we're gonna. I think we're either playing a one shot or we're starting 
our game again on Thanksgiving break, and then we pick up with a little break. Uh, for like a like, few sessions. Yeah, like longer sessions over breaks. Yep. Yeah. Um, and that one uh, is, that's where I have my monk. Um, he's a shifter, and so uh, it was that's one like of the... On, yeah. yeah, so he can, as a bonus action, he can grow talons out of his fingers, and it's like Extra. bonus punching. Yeah. So between that and the monk, it's like... He's like whacking stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's great. Um, but the world that we play in for that is based off of uh, Guild Wars. Mm. The air mattress is probably going to be loud to go up. I would do it against it. You want to do it now? Gonna do it um, uh, no, not for me. Of course, downstairs. I think she's going to do it downstairs. No, I've never been downstairs. Are we keeping it up? Are you okay? No, I'm fine. Are you sure? Do you need anything? Let's do it. Live in. Who's there to build the air mattress? So there's an outlet for going to do it. Oh. There you go, man. There you go, man. Yeah. They said, do you want to go you down? down? No, I'm good. Uh, Did you just see what I retweeted? I just saw the Ryan's tweet. Well, yeah, I retweeted. What did he tweet? Mask? He's doing... Yeah. Yes! He's doing uh, Talking with Tiberius with a Tiberius mask, apparently, on Twitch. Talk, talk with Tiberius. The mask was yeah. fucking awful. That's super rad, dude. Holy shit. No glasses and everything. Yeah. yeah. That's super fucking rad. I'm really beginning to think that he wanted, he, think, he really considers Tiberius to be himself. His brand. Oh, yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. yeah. With what he thinks. Yeah. And I think that's like, I mean, I'm not going to ever conjecture why, but. No, but. No, <laughs> but. <laughs> Not publicly. Yeah, it seems like he thinks he has copyright or something. Well, you could tell in the last few games, he was, I don't know, different. Yeah. yeah. Before the deep cratering. Yeah. Which I don't know how many people actually saw. I didn't. You guys went to New York, and there were that many critters. They're not all on Twitter. No, not at all. I don't think a lot of people saw that. I only saw it because you guys mentioned it in Skype. Yeah. Because you got the lead. I followed the guy that, but like he didn't have that many followers. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I thought, yeah, whoever posted it, I was I was following it and I saw Ryan's response to it because I was also following the guy. Yeah. And Laura retweeted it once. But I don't know. Yeah, With how many people? Yeah. She commented on it. Yeah. Oh no, she commented on. It. You said you were always. So yeah, and as much as I imagine I miss on Twitch or Twitter, sure, I I don't think other people. I have to. Every time you take out, yeah, the <laughs> light behind you glows. It gets brighter. You can't even see it. Nice. She has a no, I see it. I see it. Oh. Wait, that wait. elevator idea was an awesome idea. I died. I literally. Before we start messing it up. I lost it. I also like the on, on your left comment, but the elevator one, I was like, that's. That <laughs> I didn't was... see the on your left comment. That's awesome. Yeah, somebody was like, yeah, and you need to run around campus, and every time you pass someone, just yell, on your left! You guys see um, Ivan's costume? No. Anyway. With his baby? It's pretty awesome. He's, oh, uh, he's, dressed, he's dressed as Jareth from Labyrinth, and his baby's in the red and white stripe. Yep. Like the baby. I didn't realize that that was Ivan. Yep, that's Ivan. Babe. Yeah. My sister dressed as uh, Jareth last year. Oh. What is happening? I'm so confused. He's got my arcane focus. That one. This has been an amazing 10 hours and 20 minutes. Seriously. 
Out of control. I've only been here for which is still ridiculous, yeah. We still have a bit to go, I think. Still have the boss fight. And also the lead up. And fights are not short. <laughs> it's gonna be another two hours. I'm gonna pass out. But I think even if something like happens to me, I love this character so much that I'll play him younger if I make him again in different things. Like he won't be this old. Like this will be towards the end of his life. If yeah, if Sans and Professor uh, survive, we're gonna be bros. I'm taking all your classes, Professor. <laughs> it's like I'm Indiana Jones, only for wizards. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, you oh, you mage handed the uh, mage handed the. Uh, is it just cantrip, right? Yeah, yeah. it's a cantrip. I mean, it's kind of, you drop it, and you kind of see, like the mist almost like start to like part around it, and like it's like it like fizzles. This the stone, stone whatever is happening, kind of like dissipates, and then also like you're like, and then yeah, and then like this giant like almost black. Door about like seven feet tall and like about eight feet wide just opens up in the middle of the mist. All you see is blackness. Like a little door. Absolutely remarkable. Absolutely, it's basically just like a That's flash. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's like a portable hole. Right. Well, first. like in cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> um, I look to the professor. You're the man with planner planner experience. All right. I say we just. <laughs> We just go? I'm not going first. I'll pick up Libby. You guys ready? I'm ready. Sure. I step in. I step into it. So like for like almost like a half second. So it's ripped out. Yeah. <laughs> for like a half second, there's like this, this brief, intense fire that you see. Just, I mean, flame and just destruction yeah. everywhere. And then also you step out <laughs> into the middle of a pretty bustling, busy city. Um, Nathaniel is to your left, but like slowly walking away. Okay. When I go through and see the fire, does the fire like become my vision, or like do I ball around and just like fire and destruction in a half second? Does it need to be like this? Like, the cat for a Just come along, Nalen. Yeah. And I, uh, step, okay. I step through. I follow. Same thing. Through. You both did that like momentarily, like, half second of just fire and destruction, and then. You go to the other side, you see the thing kind of like off and to the left, like to the dark to the left, yeah. And then like you guys come out to a pretty bustling city. Everyone's kind of walking around, doing their own thing. Light out, looking at the ground. Um, walking yeah. around, doing their own thing. As soon as all of us are sitting there, I cast past the Valkyries. And the shadows are like almost like grip around Just, you. Yeah, so you'll have plus 10 to yourself. Alright, nice. Um, it's daytime, right? It's like, so. Yeah, um, everyone roll perception. I'll point out which direction. Uh, 17. Uh, 19. 19. Yeah. Um, so, and you guys are stealthing too? Are you, are you, attempting, are you attempting to stealth too? Uh, I would like to stealth. I think stealthing would be smart. Like, real quick, so, like, in this bustling town, before you roll. Yeah. In this bustling town, like, people like walking through town, lively, seems like a normal town. You notice circling around um, the outside of the keyboard. They're mostly flying humanoid figures. Yep, they're fully stealthy. <laughs> yeah. But out in that, it's a totally normal town. Yeah. Yeah. They keep uh, three, like 400 feet away. Fully stealthing them? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Plus 10. Oh, Third. good. <laughs> that. 18. You guys are all like, yeah, you guys all kind of like that stick to the and like in and out of the building. Yeah, so you're <laughs> sure. uh, Wait, hold on, that is a. Cat is super stealthy. It's like. <laughs> Just making sure. Yeah, so you guys are kind of like all like sticking to the shadow city. And you notice that like moving around, like no, no one really catches your eye. It's just like a normal, normal town. You don't really see. Like they don't notice us, or we don't notice anything. You don't notice anything. Uh, it's just like a normal town. They don't really seem to pay you in mind. Maybe like, like a side glance or two. Like, some like locks eyes briefly for you, but like just kind of like looking through you almost. Right. Um, and actually like, sticking a shadow, like darting in between buildings, like 
Where do you guys want to go? You want to make your way towards the gate? Uh, so, uh, wait, so you, you show them the direction that Nathaniel went on? Yeah, yeah, I do. I did. Like, off to his left, he kind of points like, in between buildings where they went. I think we should be following Nathaniel. Yeah. Well. Well, this is supposed to be uh, You can always try. Uh, well, I was going to cast Locate Creature on Lord Byron. Describe the name of creature that's familiar to you. No, you, you don't know. Nah, not yet. Yeah. Um. Okay. Although I can also use I can use it to sense a specific type of creature, so I just give it away down there. So I can know what we are if there's an undead thing. Okay. Backlash. The first, the first one would. Uh. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I want to do it. What is it? Is it a? It's a spell. Samson, you look. You look. You look like you're thinking. <laughs> I. I have. I, I have the spell locate creature. Because... I, I think we should follow the path. Okay. <laughs> I agree. And so I, 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 which direction is Daniel went in? I would like to know what the heck is going on. Because this obviously. But of course I'm whispering. Yeah, yes. that's, yeah, I assume. Yeah. So you guys kind of go in the direction that you point at Nathaniel way and everyone kind of follow the suit. And the closer you get to the keep, the more, the more you notice people looking through you. Not catching your eye, but like it's like they look through that's you or something. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, and then the closer you get, and then you kind of hear like, yeah, yeah. And you see Nathaniel behind one of the bigger blows, like motioning you over into here. He's up into that, I guess. Yep. Probably. Uh, we were we got behind the behind the building like Nathaniel. And Nathaniel like, like yeah. doesn't do it. You're now. about now probably went like 100 feet. You're now like 300 feet from the keep. Yeah. Um. He's like, what are you doing walking around like that with all those creatures out there? Nathaniel, they, they look like normal. No. This town looks like a normal bus. Define your place. definition of normal. This looks like an un, un, a normal town with five people going about their daily business. Huh? There's no life in this city. The ghosts, I point to the people walking past the alley. I'm, a, I'm looks, afraid. What it looks like, like to me is normal people. He like looks and he's like, that creature's not natural. And he ducks his head behind. What are you, what are you seeing? I see living people going about their life. Here we go. Uh, okay. As you like see these people walking by, you almost see like the closer you look, and the more you describe like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like you look and look and look, and you kind of see like almost every once in a while something will, like just like be walking. And you'll see like this like thousand yard stare, its mouth open like it like looks like it wants to scream, but it's silent. Like no one sees anything. Other than that, like it seems like normal, normal, normal. And like, every once in a while, you see something like mouth open, eyes glaze, like scream. And then every few people you see like a shimmer of a figure and it either disappears or when you see the shimmer you kind of see like an almost like hunched over flawed figure in its place. Uh, I tell them that. Um, what I see. Okay. So okay. is it like an illusion? I'm guessing. Guess it. I always have an illusion. illusion special to tell you. What? what? Uh, did you hear what? Yeah, she sees like every while. I look like, do you see it now? I'm looking. Yeah, is it some kind of illusion? I don't know what you're seeing, but it's something we've seen something entirely different. Do you see? Uh, Darkness see and creatures all around. No, we don't see that. <laughs> do you see? We see normal people walking around. And then the occasional shimmer of a human's figure and a hunched looking creature. Creatures. I can assure you, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. Well, that's okay. I described the uh, shadow, the darkness that we fought yeah. to him. Is that what you see? Humans, almost. 
Nope. Gods are spatters of any kind, just striped as figured humans. I lean over to the professor. Uh, well, I say it anyway. What if he's just crazy? But I whisper that to the professor. I'm inclined to believe that there's more going on here than the eyes. There is definitely. Oh, we have it? too much evidence that there's been something. Other people talked about this. He's not the only one. I wish I could see it. Wow. Um, stare really hard at me. So, like, Wait. no. Hold on. Maybe. Maybe. Um, and you said the letters. Um, so, um, I'm going to cast Dispel Magic. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes. On nice. one of the figures walking by. Is it this? The big one? It's insane. It's, it's one action. The range is 120 feet. Instantaneous. It says choose one creature, object, or magical effect within range. Any spell of third level or lower on the target ends. Um, for each spell, fourth level or higher. On the target, make an ability check using your spellcasting ability. The DC equals uh, 10 plus the spell's level. So you kind of like, you're like, fuck this, and like you throw your hand out of the passing. But you're not, there is um, a woman walking by with like a basket of apples. There's a child kind of running through the streets, like, oh, he's a child. Playing. <laughs> um, and there's two men walking next to, like, like, kind of business, like, not business, but like working men dressed in like slacks and shirts talking to each other as they walk by. So pick uh, one out of the four. Uh, that's a five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So as you kind of wait, 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 you throw your hand at the spell magic and you see like an illusion, like shimmer. They don't seem to notice anything, but. Instead of this woman with the basket now, you see shambling in front of you, like this distraught, disfigured, like almost like like not ripped face, but like shriveled thing, like 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 dragging itself through the ceiling. No, that's what you see. Well, sure. I know. I guess it's like, yeah. And you all see that. Walking, you all see that walking by. Well. I like slamming against the wall. Like, what the fuck? And then, like, yeah. like Nathaniel kind of raises, like, now you see what I'm talking about? Yep, now we do. How come, how come you can see the. It's obviously connected to the. It kind of like yeah, closes, like, look at their eyes. I mean, it tells you all to like, kind of peek around and look at, like, the villager's eyes. Everybody roll perception. Uh, Fifteen. I got a one. I got a twelve. Twenty-one and you guys find. So as you like yeah. focus in on the eyes of these villagers, you see almost like after a while, really trying to focus in on the people walking by. You see them; they're not people. They're, their eyes are like white and glaze over. And the more you yeah. focus on them, the more you see like pieces of their face distort and change. And like you see some of them sometimes when we walk by that open mouth, and right. you're trying to realize that like, things are not as they seem. And the more you focus, and the more you focus, and the more you focus. It almost like in like an area it seems that wherever you're focusing, it starts to like dissipate whatever spell is like yeah. having them. And the more it dissipates, the more you see like um, the whole figures just disappear and vanish. Um, figures turn into what you'd be familiar with as like um, the real history. Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, yeah. So uh, what what you know are undead creatures. Um, the zombies. What you've seen before, you notice that. And then, yeah, you, well, no, because you don't want to see this. As oh, the, oh, as sorry, the, you're the only one who's focused enough yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, so you go to like whole people, like the illusion fades on certain people. Like there's like 
that stitch together creatures walking through the streets and things flying overhead like black humanoid figures and like things shambling through the streets. And the more you do it, the buildings itself start to go from these like nice, clean, live buildings to like gray, dilapidated, but still like almost like the shape is kept there, but they're like gray buildings now. Mm -hmm. the more you know, and then eventually it starts to dissipate, fade, and all you see is like gray buildings and things shambling through the streets. So what you guys see, is I'm like kind of lean forward, like kind of squinty, squinty eye a little bit, like I'm like, concentrating on what I'm doing, and as the that like the, the radius of what the illusion I can see through now kind of spreads, I'm like I'll lean forward, and I'm kind of like straighten up, my eyes widen a little bit, and I just like left stone face, like blank face, as I realize like I get that final part, and I. Say to Nathaniel, I see it now. Good, then you know what? You know, all in grave danger. To shoot you guys? Um, Obviously, I, I saw it on that thing when she just fell. Look. Must make haste. If you look hard enough, you'll see it here. Must make haste. Okay, we should just go. Um, fair one of the things that I find about us. Perfect. Perfect. Six. So there's like black, black shadowed humanoid figures flying above it. Okay. Nothing seems to notice you have that you can tell. Oh, uh, well, I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Suggest we stick to the shadows. That's the bad way. Let's get to the key. Yep. Let's go. So, two options. One, our brains are immediately not sure where we land in the basement. Land right before Thon, land anywhere within there. Two is we sneak through the city, and I get you to the first floor of the key. Like the first floor of the base, because it would be one of you two, maybe be out. The right to the door, I'll What was the first floor? I can get you there almost immediately, but can't guarantee where we'll come out. Did you get it? Just... Yeah, I heard that. Okay. I mean, I'm up for that option. Professor. Yes. It's a bit yep. risky. It is. We do have a uh, trace of them wanting to go sneaky sneaky. A bit risky. The direction. But are we prepared? So you were, you were proposed to take us to teleport us basically to uh, Somewhere he can he, towards his, he can guarantee you that you can basically look towards his lab. My father's a monster, but he did teach me a few things before he went lab. Right. He basically says like he, he knows certain things that his father taught him, like in his background. He can get you somewhere in the basement, it'd be like B one or B two. You but you he's can not us to take us to Thon, not real far. Yes. It'll be somewhere in the basement, like below the key. Yeah. Nope. Okay, you know, Jack shit. So I believe you believe. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. Well, Professor, I was going to ask, do you have a way to teleport yourself? I don't think you do have dimension door prepared, basically. I, I, uh, okay, I do not have dimension. I have a uh, book. Oh, okay. Please choose me just quickly. I think we're going to be as prepared as we're going to get right now. So the fastest. Yes, the more time, the more time we waste, the more time. Yes. yes. <laughs> so uh, okay. okay. Well spoken. Yes. Yeah. We'll, uh, yeah. I guess. Yeah. 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 Okay, so it's like uh, gas gasoline rise up. For when we need Yeah, if we teleport and we're in front of Don, that's why we're in Yeah, just Don. <laughs> he kind of like brings you on. He's like, can I guarantee we'll end up? Hello, I think someone's gonna probably. Oh, that's it. It's, it's all or nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's all yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just fucking with that. So good. But he basically like, hold on tightly, hold your breath. He gathers you all in, and you feel everything around you like, like almost like the air getting sucked out of the area around you. 
as you all close your eyes, like like just utter blackness around you. And it's about like like ten seconds of this feeling of just like black and like the air around you being sucked out. And then, and it's like yeah, it's like like the darkness is almost like like grasping around you. You can't see anything. And then all of a sudden it's just like you settle down and you feel hardcore. You open your eyes and you seem to be in like a like a thirty by thirty empty room, presumably somewhere in the basement. You're saying like. And you're basically looking right at, I, at him, like right across. I, I like an ex- exasperated exhale. Like, like thank God that we actually were at that. <laughs> that would have been the worst. That what, was the worst. Arya just touched herself. I want to point that out to you. Know? Oh, what did she do? She grabbed the blanket, and curled She's up. She's underneath the blanket. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, Arya, she's the cutest dog of all time. Okay, so we're in this thirty by thirty room. Light, dark. Uh, it's there's torches, it's lit. It's, yeah. We need. Uh, yeah, possibly. It's impossible. Uh, okay. Okay. This seems like one of those like I draw it as I go in this. What? This game is joking so bad. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's yeah, it's one of the fastest things Samsung takes me to in the West. Yeah, it's great because the one that I have for mine is like totally busted, so it takes forever to charge. You, we're gonna need like a whole. Uh, <gasps> what if I throw up? It'd be a little. <laughs> it might be gross. So I'm gonna kind of have to draw it as we go. Oh. So we'll say for right now, you guys are in like a. I'm gonna think of what I want to See, as long as there's room, there's like a, like a desk over in the corner. I'm just drawing some yeah. random shit. Like a rug in the center of the room. And you're in this like like nicely furnished like dresser over here, like like big bed dresser wall, and like you're in this like, kind of nicely furnished room. It kind of opens up, and then I was like, oh, oh, it works. Um, what do you mean it works? I'm a little unsure of where we land. First time, third. Okay, better than none. Uh, and it says like I, I know we're on the, the lower level to be two kids there. Yeah. One of the beginning rooms, um, but I know we are on Thon's floor. Perfect that I can do. So you're, he basically tells you <laughs> yeah, you're, on, you're on Thon's floor. Gonna, we're, on, we're on the floor that Thon's floor. Yeah, or at least what well, he thinks that Thon yeah, should be on. Yeah. What do you guys want to do? Uh, probably best keep the ring. Um, and I still have password on the trip, so I'm just. Yeah, it's fine. Well, let's move the power. We're all nice to get I mean, there's something around the kids that's always been here and not been here. Like, it's just, it just looks like a nice room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's concentration of the power. Yes. Uh, I think I'll, su- I'll suggest we maybe look around and see where we landed. Right. Yeah. 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 I. Sneaky, sneaky. Kind of see the doors. I mean, I know we're inside, but <laughs> it's it's open. Okay, I just kind of peek out into the hallway. Ah, uh, so we're all set. Nineteen. So you kind of like natural twenty. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like. As you open up the door and you kind of like peek your head out, you might know, you look to your right, and, and it seems to be like a pretty big, like hallway. And you look to your right, and there seems to be like stairs that like are spiraling up that way. And then you look to your left, and you can see this. This is there anything that kind of torch lit? Right. There's like right here. 
where there's like a corner. Okay. And you see a door. That's all you see poking head out. You don't see anything. Like it's 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 pretty dimly lit because of everything. So this was the spir spiral staircase. Yeah, I, I see this. So like you kind of like rock cam. Where it was, it was fine. Yeah. I'll try to get you so you can see. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's perfect. Right there. I forgot you have the other cam. Yeah, I, I mean, can see the. Like, yeah. See, there's about like 20 feet up. Um, it, it's a bigger, grander hallway. And you kind of realize that, like, you seem to like just have entered. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, then I'm gonna move out of the door okay. and start moving down the hallway. What do you guys want to do? I'm trying to follow. Yeah, if Nalen just does that wordlessly, I'll follow. <laughs> okay. then it goes, um, here you go. He kind of like follows that behind you, so he'll kind of like follow it. I'm gonna Let's stop see. at the corner and do the same thing and kind of peek around you, you, this you way. Peek around the corner. Yeah. That by pretty well. And you see like two dimly lit. Like humanoid figures flanking either side of the door, you're not sure what. Well, roll for a second. I'll see if you can uh, peek your head around the door. Oof. Um. Or else we're gonna have to fuck with it. Good old level one. Ah, uh, nice. Two. Yeah, so you peek your head around, you can kind of see like they're like dressed in black, like <coughs> black leather armor. <coughs> Bless you. Um, and you look back, and the same crest that's on uh, Nathaniel's black armor is on uh, this black armor as well. It, it seems like a family crest. Um, okay. So it's not like a, you kind of recognize it as like this armor would be like every noble family, like whoever has a like, guards or whatever armor they don out, are given like their family crest to show like what family they come from. Mm -hmm. So you see like two doors, and flanking either side um, are the two those two creatures. Um, who is the one all the way in the back? Uh, this guy. Roll for second. Okay. And, uh, let's see, 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 and the next thing you feel are towns raking through your back. Fuck! Uh, I need everybody to roll me. Oh, God. A four? I got a seven. I got two. So I reread the thing, I forgot. Libby's supposed to have her own initiative. Oh, because she could axe technically on her own. Libby's got a 19. I got a two. I got a. Oh, I'm going before you, but not uh, that far behind. <laughs> a four. Do we all roll low? Nope. Yeah. Although I don't know what the tango rolled. Just to split this on that one guy. I prefer to get ones on initiative than anything else. So. Sure. Get it out of the way now. Oh, yeah, let's get the PGGs in there. Oh, yeah, do Mm -hmm. Well, I am gonna surprise this guy, so I cast fire. I'm gonna drop faster than a trace then. So if I thunder wave. <laughs> what did you guys get? I got a 7. I got a 2. Lydia has a 19. Yep, I got it. 4? Wait, what are we? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Just going, initiative rolls. Four? The initiative rolls four, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. It was good on the other guy. Time to go up the. So the spell attack, just a quick question. The spell attack modifier is only. Only add that to when it says to add it. Yeah. What? It, well, who got? What? It, who got that? What did you get? Seven. Oh, seven. Oh, okay. So that's... a lot of spells that actually. 
Yeah, if it does make a spell attack, that's what you want to use. Oh, I am... Oh. Adding the wrong number for this entire time. For good or for worse? Uh, I've been adding a 5 on my spell attacks. Should be a 6. Should be an... It's an 8. Oh, wow. So you've been hitting a lot more than you've been hitting. Yeah. Changes everything. It does. Oh, the spell attack bonus? Yeah, yeah. I have a 7. I have been using my attack bonus. That's different. Like an idiot. Same thing. I'm calling an idiot, but that's different. Welcome to being a caster. Um, so you feel it's like almost like a raking sensation across your back. How murdered do I get? Uh, 23 to hit. Oh my god, I'm like damage. What? <laughs> I didn't know, 23 to hit. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I never. It's, no, stop rolling. Uh, eleven points. Uh, nothing. Okay, cool. Uh, eleven points in the crowd damage. Oh god. Wow. As you turn around and you basically see this like, like ink, like an incorporeal creature behind you. Um, you, you kind of say plain clothes, but like it looks like it's like arm is severed from its hand, but like so floating next to it. And you look around, like you just see this like horrifying thing in front of you. But as you like rake your back and turn to look mm -hmm. like behind you, uh, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh no! So as you as you turn That's around. I got this. Uh... As you turn around and see this creature, you basically look directly into its eyes, mm -hmm. um, and you are considered uh, frightened for one minute, and oh. uh, would you get a one? Uh, so you also age 30 years. <laughs> Holy shit! Okay, what? like that's not that bad. No, but so you age thirty <laughs> years. You're frightened for a minute. Now. It's basically as like the light is sucked out of you. Like, <gasps> like you're terrified, and the light is sucked out of you. You age thirty years. It's... Okay, so instead of salt and pepper hair, I have white hair now. Yeah. Um. So as all of you turn around, uh, oh, yeah, you guys all turn around. But, and see but your ears are pointy still, but now there's like a little bit of a droop. <laughs> Uh, How old are you now? 95. Oh, God. <laughs> Which, I, mean, that feels I, I would say what would probably like... happen at this point was that all of you would turn around and see why your guy yeah, yelled you behind you, if we're going to be completely honest. Yeah. So I need everybody to make a wisdom saving throw. Right? So that, that would be the natural order of events. What does that mean? Uh, 13. 13. Natural 20. You're fine. I'm fine anyway. I don't know what you rolled. I said he's fine. Yeah. Oh, uh, wisdom saving? Yeah. Uh, 18. You're fine. Okay. So like, as all of you yeah, turn and okay. see, like it seems like you focus more on uh, Samson. And as you look at this thing, it's like this like floating woman, hair wisping back. It looks like both of her arms are severed from, or both of her hands are severed from her arms. Um, her legs are like almost cut into ribbons. Um, tattered clothes falling behind her and like her hands are still floating where her hands should have been but they're disconnected right, from her body um, and as you turn around you see immediately um sam or samson's hair go from like, salt and pepper to stark white as he as he like <gasps> like like reels in and, and just looks terrified at this creature um so it is uh living turn okay. uh, Okay, so she like kind of like using her bag and it runs yeah. behind the rest yeah. of the group. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can you put a red uh, D8 behind you? As Nathaniel comes up, you can kind of see that he like moves his hand across his blade. You can almost see that he glows like bright red for a second. 
And as he comes up, and like he takes both his blades out, like as he like, kind of runs his hand across the blade to take both his like short swords out from back by his belt, um, he's going to move like, basically to the right of you, Mike. He's gonna move. Yeah, he's gonna move over there, and he's gonna like, throw one sword through the creature and he just pass without having anything happen to it. And you raise the other one, since you've blown a little bit brighter, you bring it down through, and actually you kind of like this. I'm sorry for that, the same we did. I have a plan. So that just happens. So like the first one, it seems like cut through it, and you kind of hear like that, like, you got that gazing. <sighs> like the blade like cuts through like her ghostly form. Uh, Random quick question. There are two guys, two guys down here, right? Yes. Well, Just two guys down here. Yeah. Last you saw, you guys all turned around. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So as like you're sitting there, frightened, like, <laughs> terrified. Um. Roll a Constitution or Charisma saving throw. Well, first, well, I think it works this way. Uh, first, first, roll your Constitution or your Wisdom saving throw. Oh, okay. I'll let you roll. You can use it or re roll. That is a 17. Okay, so you're good. So, like, you kind of like, after it looks in your eye and almost like steals age from you, you kind of like look at it and you're like almost angry that it's, it's stolen 30 years of your life from you. And you can feel the age process. I mean, you're hand but you still feel it. Um, and then, as it's looking like directly at you, I need you to make a clear thing. Am I still frightened? No, yeah. So as this thing looks into your eyes, it, it starts to move towards you and actually goes into your body and you are now considered possessed. Yeah, here's, Shit. My, here's my character sheet. Thanks, nice, buddy. Sick. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, whatever. They're low throws too. Yeah. You're just not rolling oh. great. <laughs> so well, as this thing basically goes into his body, he, tur right. he turns around and faces you and you're aware of everything going on, like but you have you're, you're powerless to stop it. Um, okay, so you're you're powerless to stop it, basically. Um, so you didn't speak in the territory thing. Or? Uh -huh. Or we do like the Queen of Resurrection spell. How do you get someone out unpossessed and then not be religious? Yeah, I don't know. Well. Okay. Try. So basically, like you're now possessed. You are, and like the, I like the way they describe describing critical role. You're like in the back of your mind. You can see through your eyes. But no matter what you do, you can't stop your body from doing something. But you know everything that's going on around you. But as it happens, all you see is uh, Samson now turn around and look at you, and you see the like, hands light up, and you almost have like an evil glare towards the rest of the party. Yeah, the ghost is gone. Like, you saw it, like it be absorbed yeah. almost into Samson. Um, uh, professor, we have a problem. <laughs> so, uh, what happens when you have eight kids? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to undo it. I thought you had an idea what it was. Oh my god, no, I had no idea. Oh, really? That's what you said you're good possessed. So uh, I was like, well, I mean, they're not even going for it. So, <laughs> so oh, you're uh, uh, yeah, let me see something. What do you mean by spells? Because I don't get in your knowledge class. Features or proficiencies. I don't know if I can use spells. It's a class which is like enough. So, I, I have a close Alright, I'm gonna try this. Um I'm gonna cast just spell magic at him. At fourth level, um, so I automatically end the effect of a spell on the target if the spell's level is equal to or less than the level of the spell slot that you use. Anything higher has to make uh, ability check. Um, or I have to make an ability check with the DC. Oh. Equal to 10 is also the spell's level. So hopefully that's a 4 or 4 level spell. 
So you can't see all that, you know? Yeah. But as you, as you pass out, it's like a blue light almost like go towards Samson and radiate out. And you can almost see like push out like behind him. Like you see his body like, <clears throat> and like push out behind him like the same vision of whatever like possessed him. And it turns just like <sighs> and like looks like extremely angry that it was now pushed from its its host. So you can have like well, so, that worked rather well. So, do I, up, do I end up behind? It's behind you. It's behind it you. was pushed through. It, it, like, oh, and it's like, um, like it was pushed. And then, as. Nope, never mind. Uh, oh, please. Uh, based on looking at it, because I don't want to look at it. Um, you guys already looked at it. You, you already made the saving throw. Uh, that was that was a uh, so, as my bonus action, I... No, I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna move out into this hallway, and I'm gonna look down, and... Can I see these... So, as you take that, like, five feet step back, and look to your left to see what's down the hallway... Yeah. Um, they're... Yeah, they're, they're literally... <laughs> Right in front of you. So they're like, and they're both like, as you take that step back, they're, yeah. they're kind of opening up their hands and coming to swing down at you. Well, balls. It's, it's better than the other outcome of you didn't know they were coming. That's yeah. true. So that was actually very serendipitous of yourself. Um, so they are gonna get the, they're, they're gonna get inserted um, after you. Okay. Um, so now they're attacking me. Yeah. Like basically, you step into light, and like you look to your left, and they're like these two creatures, like kind of like like gauntly white faces. Human, like still human, but like only white faces, like coming, like, like almost like running them all. They, they heard like basically the commotion of what was happening. Okie dokie. And I need things. Things, okay. Well, I'm glad that the spell magic worked. Yes, that was awesome. Thanks. That would have sucked. Save. Oh, look. I was too. That's my possession. No. <laughs> I don't want to melt Samson's face, but if I have to melt his face. Yeah. So, um, the one. Donde? Oh, Um, so, like, they're both gonna kind of, like, lunge at you, like, like, these, like, pale, like, shark claws, and kind of see, like, they're opening their head. Like, these are, like, human. Like, so, they're like, like, yeah, you know what I'm so you don't see that she does, right. um, and then you see like these like sharp fangs, and kind of kind of like jump oh, right to attack you. Yeah. Like, so much spook. Uh, <laughs> twenty-two damage. Like, twenty-two, twenty-two to hit. Sorry. Twenty-two to hit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it, it kind of like it's gonna um, reach out you. So the first one, the left, uh, missed. It like came at you as close and kind of misjudged like as you were stepping back and it kind of swept right in front of you. Um, the second one though found purchase on its claws and it is going to instead of doing damage attempt to grapple you. Oh, okay, so instead of doing no, it's a. Who's gonna? It just says can grapple. It's an escape DC thirteen. Should we just do it now? I think it, then it's just a straight. Is that all it is? Yeah, it says escape DC 13. I mean, even if it's dex, it, I add nothing. So, so it's, just, it's just straight each one. Good luck. And mm -hmm. I got an 8. So, I'm currently So, like, this thing, like, it kind of, like, <sighs> grabs onto you, and, and, and you can feel like it's, it's like a smaller creature. It's, like, not as big as you, but, I mean, you can't move. Like, it's, right. it's weird, because this thing shouldn't be able to hold you like this. Right. Oh, oh, oh. You're looking at me like, that's Well, I was like, oh. Fuck, I have to choose the 20 ones. Get to the ones. Well, it seems like I have taken the 10 and 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 the so three. It's fire, right? Yeah, it's fire. Uh, that's a twenty-four. Uh, it hit. It hit. It hit. It hit. Well, so roll all your. Uh, the twenty natural twenty. 
Uh, that, that will hit as well. And uh, 18. All three hit. So right. roll damage on the first and the third. Roll, sep- or roll damage on one, the second one double, and then roll your damage on the third. Uh, the first one is nine. Okay. 14. Did you double that? Yeah, I doubled it. Okay, so 14? Yeah. Okay. And the third one is 4. So, as you see, like, basically your, your, your student almost get, like, possessed by this, like, ghostly creature. You, kind of, like, you, you feel, like, a hint of that rage again, not so much for your daughter, but just, like, for any loved ones or, like, friends in your life now. There's always that hint of, like, anger almost, like if anybody tries to harm anything that you care about. And so you kind of like reel back and throw these like three beams at it. And like the first two kind of like pass through, you can tell like, like wherever it does damage, it kind of emanates out like light. And then the third one just goes right through it. And you just see like this like, like almost like fire emanate from it. It eventually like regains its shape, but you can tell it's like, <sighs> like it's like, it's looking pretty rough. Take care of that. Um, is that your turn? Uh, yes. Oh, well, I'm gonna move just a little between everybody. All right, so you move them, move them back. Where am I? Okay, right okay. Just move me five feet. Yeah, nope, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I just want to be like in between equal distance. And okay. All the baddies. Uh, so. Alright, so this is just the like squishing rays. Uh, I'm just gonna hit it, like turn on my heels and fire it. Hit. Okay. Oh, oh, that's still fine. It's a seventeen. Did it go from like the twenty? It rolled up onto the die and up onto my next card and then roll back to it. Again. Oh, that's Dustin, do I like, bring in help now well or later? Huh? Should I bring in help now or later? I'll save it. Okay. Nope, there oh. goes Mike. Four hours. Uh, eleven points. We've now reached the twelve-hour mark. Oh my god. Alright. So after being possessed and turned like being possessed and controlled by this creature, you kind of like heal point like like shoot out your foot and out of your hand and just like like face like no more experience like ever box like yeah. And you see like the fire like it's like right in face like you see like blast your face and. <sighs> Dissipate in the air. I killed it, Dustin. Um, I need. Yeah, so you just, yeah, it's like, a shot. Um, is that your turn? Uh, uh, so if I turn around, can I see these guys? You can see, like, one of them. One, like, lunge past, and you kind of can't see the other one. But no, yeah. Did you see one lunge past her, and, like, you can kind of see, like, it's, like, from the corner now, and then one is trying to grab her. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like that? No, it's like it kind of is like still like even with you. Okay. Like kind of like launched at you, and the other one has a grapple. Okay. Um, professor, roll a perception check. I'm trying to get it to the fourteen. Fourteen. So. As you guys are in the hallway, and after you take care of that creature, and you turn your attention on the, uh, the basically the, the humanoid creatures in front of you that are currently grappling and uh, uh, nailing, you feel like cold come out of the wall of your left, and you turn, and I need you to make a uh, wisdom saving throw. Oh, Professor. Oh, wisdom saving throw? Yeah. That's uh, 19. Okay. So as you turn and look in the wall, all you see is basically almost the same, like the face of a woman, kind of like the face you saw before. And that's all you see jutting out of the wall and like hands reaching towards you. And you're kind of used to seeing it now, so it doesn't seem to like frighten you or, or scare you. They're in the walls. They're in the walls. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, wait, I got to do that? So you? he would. So I got to. Uh, yeah, it's a glue coming right out of the wall from right to his left. Yeah. Um, I don't like so, 
Uh, you're, are we just skipping your gap? Are you saying it's high, right? Yeah, that's, it. that's fine. Yeah, you're not. Uh, it's high. That's, that's yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. so uh, uh, So Nathaniel sees that, that another kind of creature came like, to be in front of the professor, and he's just kind of, kind of like with his swords, and he's going to kind of run up, and he's going to. He, he get right there. That's fifteen. That's good. Because uh, he moves up, then he'll gain. From there, he Yeah, with one. So he's just kind of trying to simply just blowing swords. He's trying to like slash, slash through. Uh, first, he has to make now that he's met his gaze a wisdom saving throw. So he kind of runs up and goes like, and then he stops like mid track, like swords in the air, and, and he and he seems to be almost like terrified of the creature in front of him. Uh, luckily, he did not fail enough. He's not aged thirty years, or however many years to be determined. Yeah. Um, so he is considered frightened. Um, like what if you die? You wither and die. Yeah. That's so cool. Uh, yeah. Um, That'd be unfortunate. I'm going to send you real quick. To... I'm going to use Wild Shape. Three. And I'm going to shift into a die roll. Well, you got to break the grapple, too. Can I do that as I'm, as I'm shifting? Or should I try and break the break grapple? Break the grapple first. first cause you have to, I know it's a bonus action to shift, I think, for a or no, you take a certain thing for it. I think it's an action. Yeah, so it's a so, total action, so you have to break the grapple first. Okay. Uh, straight. It's a straight, straight roll. Oh my god. Oh, is it? Oh, I'm old so long. Um, so you kind of like, like, it's like grabbing it. You kind of like push, push yourself away in an action. Like you can, if you want, you can push up when you land as a dire roll. Yeah. Right, so you kind of push yeah. up away in like mid shape. <laughs> if you land as like a dire roll in front of it. And since I'm in front of it, uh, oh, there's your, like, your dice for that. Okay, yeah. But the wolf has a bunch of attack rolls against the dice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You already used the uh, action to shift. Right, yeah, so I can't attack, but I was reading if I have an attack attack. Right. So if somebody gets to five feet, I get a bit. Yeah. Works. Just like um, so you kind of like, I should <laughs> you kind of snarl and like, get ready for the camera. Yeah. Uh, they're going to attempt to lunge at you once more. That is uh, uh, 16. That hits. Does he have more on than I do? This is stupid. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well. So the one again, the one to your left, kind of like, or the one in front of you, like as it went to swipe at you again, as you like pounce back and shift in the with a misjudged. How like big you were, uh -huh. kind of swept and, and missed, like grabbing at you. But the one that was originally missed you, you got to attack of in the second. So it came at you and uh, roll uh, d20. Strike d20. Seven. Um, and like it kind of, even though you have this big dial form, it, it kind of grabbed you by like, the side of your legs, and you are, you are now considered grappled by this creature. Um, and. Uh, eleven. Is it? Uh, that does not hit. Okay. So, like it grabs you and it goes. You can see like as it rears back and tries to bite. You kind of like push yourself inside. You're still grappled, but like it like didn't find purchase on the actual bite. Tried to bit bit you. Nice. Brought you bite you. Brought you bite you. Classic uh, freaky poopy ghost. Yep. Poopy. Uh, professor. All right, thing coming out of the wall, scorching ray. Uh, yeah, it seems like right in front of you now. So there's like, <laughs> what level are you casting at? Huh? Level? Uh, the regular second level. So. Okay. Uh, that's a ten. That probably won't. Not be good enough. Uh, that's a twenty six. Good. Uh, twenty. 
the last two of them. Modified. Six for the first one. And six for the second one. So this is gonna kinda of go in front of you kinda of like in like almost like a like a pack kind of like throw your hands out again to shoot um, these scorching rays or the first one kinda of like careens and hits the wall and kinda of like scorches into the wall and do like a like a circular burn mark around it. And the next two fly right into this like creature in front of you and you can kinda of see the same like fiery energy get dispersed throughout its body and you can kinda of see that the two definitely the damage to it. Uh same, same. Uh, so that one's still alive. And, and, Let's see that, and I also see the one that's uh, grappling me. Again. I, I uh, fireball the one in front of us. Mm-hmm. This guy. Okay. Uh, I've grown very fond of the old one. Natural 20. That one hey! definitely did. Yes. yes. Well then. Man, the collective was smart <laughs> putting us together. Yeah, that worked out that I chose to go for you, and I got Natural 20. Alright, that. Five so ten fire damage. That's okay. Can we like cool though and like blow it up? Don't die. No, that's really unfortunate. That was really fucking cool. So yeah, it's like as you see, like this like old man, you almost you almost come like really like almost like a father figure. You like he gets on your hair. Oh, it's been like three days. He's a father figure. <laughs> You've been through a lot of shit yeah, in three days. I'm taking the ticket. This has been a long three days. Yeah, yeah. Like, one of those, like, I'm going too old for this shit. Yeah. And you see, he, like, he's currently, like, fighting this, like... <laughs> he's now literally really old for this. Yeah. <laughs> you, you are now... You are for, I have to be pretty old now. Yeah. But, like, well, not really old. old. What do you look at? 200? Yeah, 180. And you're how old now? 90. He's, he's middle-aged. <laughs> middle-aged. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. So oh, you kind of, like, pin and, like, yeah. shoot the fire and you like... <laughs> There's like eruption of fire that like burns right through, it hits a wall behind it, and you can tell you're just like, <sighs> and it's looking like it's starting like the same like blinking in and out kind of thing. So it's looking pretty roughed up. It's like, it looks really roughed up. Um, um, much better when I add eight. Uh, yeah. 22 versus your armor class, Professor? Yeah, that will hit. <laughs> okay, just, just here. Uh, just that will Four dice. I lost that. 19 points in necrotic damage. Cool. Alright. Uh, as it, as it reaches out, like, rakes its claw right through the front of your chest, and you can feel, like, this, like, icy cold touch is, like, like... Oh, I should have moved that right. Break, break, break through your chest. Wasn't thinking. <laughs> uh, so Nathaniel seeing like the fireball and like these two scorching rage runs over and runs at it and basically it's like the two swords that like, comes down to X action. And you see like it's right in front of your face, it's like all you see is like <sighs> as it dissipates. He didn't even need to roll damage. Really I good. could have. Oh, I'm so scared. Did you keep forgetting you have reaction spells? Yes. <laughs> well, I, should, I could have moved and avoided maybe that, but. Um. So up next is. Alright. Okay. Right. We're currently grappled to the roll. Um. Or deck grappled. So I can't stay grappled and fight him. I don't think you can attack. What you? Ah. Uh, so you got. You got. I do. You're right. You need one. The grapple creature speed becomes zero and it can't benefit from any one speed. The condition ends if the grapple is fast as The condition also ends if an effect removes the grapple creature from the uh, grappling effect situation where a creature is curled away by the thunder. But they don't say anything about not being able to attack, I guess. So, yeah, you can go in like, as a grapple and try to bite at it. Well, then I'm going to just bite at it because I would rather try and do damage than bring grapple right now. I'm not moving. Well, that makes sense because Grog was, gra- was attacking the right. tentacle thing when he was. <laughs> yeah. Didn't Percy shoot the mouth of the yeah. thing while he was so he had his hand it grappled in the Oh yeah, yeah. Shot. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, that was a bad yes, bro. Natural 
Finally. Roll. Roll up, roll down. Oh, God. You'll never make that happy. You'll never be here natural 20. <laughs> That'll love. I know. Yeah. 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 Love it, love uh, They're double the dice, right? Yeah. You so double the damage. Double all of it? Yeah, and you add your modifiers and you double them. Okay, no, you double them in. Oh. Uh, so it's 6, so 12, oh. and then uh, so 15 points of damage. 30. And. Uh, I don't know if this counts since it's a grapple, but if the target is a creature and must succeed on a DC 13 strength saving, it will be not pro. But since it's a grapple, I don't know if it like, counts as that. Like, you're, like, yeah, you're a big creature. So <laughs> like, as you're going in for your bite, you're shift, they're trying to shift all of its weight and to kind of basically like, land on top of it. You said 50 is 15 points of damage? Yeah. Okay. And then I power smash. This needs 13 strength saving. Yeah, yeah it does with the toys. <laughs> You see what? 13. So like, yeah, you try to like, shift your weight onto it. It's just kind of like standing still and you almost yeah. can't move. But like, you sunk your teeth right into like the shoulder right here on it and like ripped away part of it. Um, is that the end of the turn? Uh, yeah. So, still being grappled. Um, he's going to go in and try to like, he's going to like reel back his head and try to bite into you. No! Oh. <laughs> Look, I'm just gonna. Son of a bitch. <laughs> so, as it reels back its head and, and sinks uh, its teeth into like the side, the side of like your dire wolf like, neck right behind here, I need you to. Uh, actually. Yeah, well, no, it just does this. So you take eight piercing damage and seven necrotic damage, and your maximum hit points are all reduced by seven. Uh, Is it from the direwolf? It's in direwolf. Right. Okay. It's maximum hit points. Whatever you take in direwolf is done in direwolf. It's not yeah, like transferred over. Right. Okay. So that's not bad. And like as it sinks its teeth, and you almost feel like it's like shape shift is nice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, seven points in the crackdown. It's starting to drain away the life in you. Um, and then the one that is also right next to you, since you are still considered a grapple, is going to take advantage of the situation and try to bite into the other side of your neck. That is going to be a natural D. Yeah. It is also going like, to like bite into your neck as you're currently grappled by this vampire. Well, the sticking teeth in your neck kind of gave it away. That's, that's kind of a history. It's kind of their shtick. Kind of their shtick. So we're going to take uh, eight points of preaching damage. Okay. And four points of necrotic damage, and your health points are reduced by four again. Your max health is reduced by four. And it goes in a wolf form. As the other one, like on the other side, next sinks his teeth in your neck and slowly starts to like, ebb the life from you. Um, you now have two vampires, like one in one side and one in the other, just slowly like, draining the blood. Styrol is going to beat the crap out of both of them. Um, so, I'm looking for... Professor. Uh, give the Styrol a growl and... So you're right, you're right here. Yes. As these freaking vampires are hanging off of my neck. Oh, I didn't realize something. Continue, you're funny. The one you hit is the one in front of you, right? Yeah. That's a seven necrotic. So this is you. So you're up. Oh. Okay. Alright, I'm going to do that first one closest to me. Um, I'm going to... Yes, I'm going to. Chromatic Orb. Uh, fire damage. I think you can do that. I don't know what the option It's not that. It's like no. basic damage. Huh? Oh, this is whispering do radiant, do radiant. I do not have that as an option. I have acid, cold, fire, lightning, and poison. Okay. Thunder. 
I just do. You yeah. kind of take like you like like whip around that little like, four inch orb in your hand, just doing red, 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 and you throw it. That's eight. That is a nine. Plus eight. Eight. Plus eight. Plus eight. I got a natural one. That doesn't matter. Oh, that's not gonna hit. So you like kind of throw it and throw it, and kind of like you were aiming at it, and I kind of like hit the wall, like a little torch in the wall, and kind of exploded. Upon that torch, it's a really bright torch now. That was the whole torch is on fire. Thank yeah. you for aiming high. Okay. I'm not wasting my luck. No, it's the. Um, so is that your whole? I'm gonna step back a little bit. Five feet or how many feet? Yeah, like right there. Right. Just look at you and be like, "Fuck." Set your up. Yeah. So, you. <laughs> As you can kind of say that they're currently like, sunk their teeth into the dire wolf that you know as uh, now. You kind of, like, it's pretty easy to like, you like rack into it and then just, like fire explodes across the back of things. like, <laughs> as it turns around and like locks eyes with you. So she can still grab that one. No, it, it, it brought its teeth out and like looked at you and like this. So Daniel is up. So Daniel is just going to take like that five foot step to that, and like as it turns, he's going to. Uh, Seven. 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 If you take that there, yeah. No. <laughs> As he kind of like, r- runs behind it like these. Actually, no. Because I had done that. So that is actually. Uh, so he like runs behind. You see those like, those almost like glowing red swords. He like crosses across the back of the angel. <laughs> Has like turned around, like facing him now, and it's basically like like let like relieved you as its current guardian is now like face to face with Nathaniel. Uh, okay. So that one's not paying attention. Yeah. So you're up, right? Now. Okay. I am. So you're currently grappled by the one in front of you, with his teeth like still in the side. Well, I'm a uh, fight him again and try and pile on him again, basically. Yeah. Hopefully this time it works out better. That sucked, and that was. Yeah, that was a terrible blow. So like, as it's like, like it's, it's in business yeah. on your neck. As you try to like, reach around your face, like that, and bite at it, you kind of miss it. You can't like bring your head around that far to actually bite at it. Can I try and break the gravel after that? Breaking gravel is a standard action. It's an action? Okay, then never mind. Yeah. So, can you bring that? I think it's. I feel like it's a good problem. I think it is. Most positive thing. Um, it's a very good grapple. So you like try to like reach your head down and bite at it, but you just like it's like in an odd angle and you can't seem to like actually get to it. Yeah. Uh, that's all I can do. I can't do So it's vampire. Yeah. Uh, so the one in front of you is going to reel back his head and like, try to like, sink his teeth in you once again. Nineteen. You take uh, four points of piercing damage. Uh huh. And nine points of necrotic damage, and you're maxed out with four five nine. I am not a wolf anymore. Yeah, that's like you see the titan again. Like you just, like you feel your form of and like you guys like. It, it goes back like I really not like this, more like this because it goes back into a, a, a draconian. Oh, 
That's a good point. It's a big part. It's probably the most pretty big, too. Yeah, but I think Daryl's a large Oh. Uh, you, you, like, go back to the original form. Mm-hmm. I'll say because of, like, it was grappling this big creature, um, I'll let you roll a... Uh, They are all opposed to strength checks. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Rolling this. Uh, I'm trying to do. Yep. That's a seven. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So as like you shimmer, like you're sh- change it, it, like it tries to like go to grab you again, and it's like not uses like it was big, yeah, and all of a sudden you're smaller, yeah. so it kind of like, goes to you, and, like yeah, you kind of like shove away, like you use your momentum to push back from it, and you're now face to face with this creature. Awesome. With the wind, yeah. Oh, yeah. for fucking bottle of grain. Yeah. yeah. Oh, never mind. So you're right in front of it right now. Um, the other one is now face to face with Nathaniel. We're gonna attempt to claw at him. Uh. This is only the like, we're in the hole. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So Nathaniel like, kind of like slashes across with both, or he, the, the vampire slashes across Nathaniel, and that leather armor kind of deflects oh, the two blows. He can't see. There's like <laughs> a giant light <laughs> behind him. Oh. Yeah, so. Uh, I'm just making funny faces at you. Professor, you're up. Just a big fly. Professor is up. Right. I am going to um, spray a frost. So I'm going to step in front of Samson. So I can get a good sight on Vampire Dude. And a uh, ray of frost. Mr. Which one? Which one closest to me? Okay. Uh, 20. Yeah. 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 Uh, seven. Cold damage. Seven. Uh, cold damage. And uh, his movement is down ten. Yeah. So basically, like, it's like something like that, like almost like, like almost like concentrated, like like basically avalanche within your hands, and it it hits right in, like the chest of this creature. So they have like familiar. I just like its whole entire body, which was once pale, now is like a slight blue to it. As it, it almost looks like frozen, um, and and it now is like his moves are much slower than they were before. Good job. Um, is that your turn? Uh, yeah. You can move back. I will move back next to. Absent. To like. Whoa. <laughs> Great, All right, now I have a line of sight on this guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to magic this one. Just mad at for a photo. So, pew pew pew. Yeah. It's 3d4 plus 3. I know. Maybe it's a mini with her. <laughs> so, as you're kind of like looking, looking, like you see the one that like is basically like grappled and bit her, like so, like you kind of like throw things, kind of like arc through the air and find the target, and like 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 arc, and you see that like familiar burst of light. It's like the first one like blows a hole here, and the second one blows it here, and turn it. The third one just kind of goes like right in between his mouth and just goes his mouth. Nice. Blows the backwards head. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right, do that to you. Yeah, your pet. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to say that. Yeah. All right, so Dan is up. Dan is going to do like a. Try to uh, swipe at it. Yeah. So. <laughs> what do you get for your favorite enemy? The advantage on attack roll? I don't think it's on attack roll. No, I think it's like tracking. Yeah. That's it? It's on like knowledge. Okay. Space, I think. I was about to say it. Nathaniel would do it. 
It's not history checks and perceptions or survival checks and so So I wonder if Is that guy considered flanked at this point? Uh that's um, Yes. Because she's on one side and she's right not gra or he yeah, for not grappling. Yeah, right. Sorry, uh, so yes. Yeah. Which it is. Yeah, so you can see the second Which he did twice. It's on the first one. It's on the first one, yeah. But you get plus two sixes. Oh yeah, stop. Stop. I was really confused with the dungeon. Come on. These two like almost like glowing red swords as it likes to descend and dance over kind of like <laughs> slashes across chest you like <laughs> as like two large gashes open up in the chest of this creature and it's like <laughs> like looking defensive it looked pretty fucked up. Yeah it did. You glad it but it looked pretty fucked up. Okay. Uh now um. <laughs> I. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull my axe and smack it right across the face. Well, you're behind it. Yeah. Okay, in the back. Back of the head. So it's like, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's a 19. Yeah, that's gonna So like you kind of like in one action like grab it and try to swing at it and like you kind of like almost I mean these things are wearing leather so you kind of like hit it and it just kind of sinks into the leather. You don't feel like go into any flesh or bone. It's like hit the leather and you pull it back and see you you never, you never get through the leather. That's upsetting. Yeah. Right, <laughs> these things are ta taking forever. Yeah. You think it'd be this long? Why? <laughs> Why <laughs> <laughs> no, two? Okay, the, the only thing is that like they kept just grappling you and biting you yeah, and like, like sucking your blood out and you can't yeah. do it. This is true. Uh oh, okay. Uh so that's uh so let me just do it on that. <laughs> of course. So uh <laughs> so So, as it's like vampire now, like almost like the axe and it's like leather, and yeah. the two guys are just like angry, like breaks talons across. Um, Nathaniel, and uh, yeah. it, it gives significant damage. Yeah. It's like it hit in the critical place. It did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I never roll this well. When I, even when I DM my other session or when I ever. play, I've ever. never ever rolled this well. I'm ever. rolling phenomenally right I've now. Never seen this before. Um, and Sucks. so, like, and then it reels back in. It goes like slash twice more through, and you can tell like the two it opened up in his leather, like ripped through his leather, and now they're kind of raking the same spots. And then if you can kind of see blood starting to trickle down Nathaniel's under. Oh my god. Shit. Poor uh, guy. Yeah. Uh. Wait, I just went. Oh, the vampire went. Yeah. Right. Uh, vampire went. Yeah. Uh, Professor. I will uh, step in front of. Not that you know they're vampires, but you all. For, for, for outside of the game. <laughs> um, and I will do uh, a frost again. <laughs> Damn it. Don't tell me that was a one. No, it's a two. It's probably not going to hit. So it's a ten. So, yeah. so like you like cast this like 
thing. Like, it's basically like moving around, it's like dodging axes from behind it and sinking <laughs> teeth and claws in the person in front of it. You cast and it kind of like hits into the wall, like almost like snow forms on the wall, like the stones when you crackle with ice. So I step back next to Samson and like, really? <laughs> Fireball boom. That's a. Just a few wishy checks. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, okay. So, okay. Kind of like, and it's the same kind of thing, but like, you're fired now, hits the ice yeah. on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. Mother of mercy, we need to kill this thing. You got yeah. Do you have something on my roll? Yeah. Uh, so that um, brings it. Oh, well, you're still your turn. We're just rolling like shit. I'm going to move into the names. No, I think that's But I'm going to go Just, just Also, so it doesn't make targets. I can also kill yeah, I think she did. Oh, poor man. Then you'll miss both of his attacks against this thing. It's like, he's like, people are around him and he's, he's afraid of hitting his newly found ally. And he swipes twice and he's kind of like conservative slashes and misses on both hits. Or misses on both hits. He rolls well for the bad guy. Yep. Hey, man. Bye bye, Joseph. <laughs> Uh, so... Wait, I have a question. Is there just one vampire left, or are there still two? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because I can't, like... Oh. I yeah. never saw when the other one died. I can't... Okay. Because I thought there was another one still. Uh, yeah, it's just... But, okay. Which is no longer a penny, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not a penny. Anymore. It doesn't have a penny. Anymore. It has, uh, lost his sense. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? He said he's lost his sense. Jack's yeah, just looking at you. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> you, not, you, you no longer have a wish. See you out, Rob. You no longer have a wish. Great, thanks. <laughs> okay, so. As a bonus action. Kiss him. Um, he forgives me. And we're going to have to fire an environment that I'm the, going the to. Uh, it's a transmutation candor, um that I'm going to use on my hand axe. And so instead of using strength for attack and damage rolls, I use my spell casting ability. Hmm. The weapon's damage die becomes a D8. So you can add your spell casting ability and you will do again. Yes. So, and then I'm going to hit him with my axe. So yeah, with right the, in the back of the head. Not that way. The unicorn dash. You still have to roll damage. Uh, and what did I say? The... Was it the die that was the unicorn? Yeah, yeah. add your modifier. Uh, six. So twelve. Twelve plus... Uh, I mean, it's a spell casting mod on for. So you probably have to roll straight down. Oh, and yeah. damage rolls. There's 16 damage. Well, what are these spell casting things? 12, mm -hmm. so 12 plus what? My spell attack run is a 7. The 12 plus 7 is a 19. Yeah. 19? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Hey. Like, as I was saying, like super distracted, you just kind of like, we like, you're like, and like, it's almost like material force covers. Your act is like, there's embedded in the back of things like, and costs blood right into your right into your face. Yeah, you're right in front on a fan right in front. Of you. Like right in front of the fan, and you see the fan like wiping away like, just okay. staring across his face, and he's like, it's okay. <laughs> just flick it away like it's played. Like, yeah. It's okay, no biggie. You can press it to the table. Huh? We can press the digitate too. Yeah, I think we should uh, worry about his movements first. <laughs> I am enjoying this immensely, and I'm glad I ditched going to a 
So th- does everyone do? Yeah. Alright, so the thing is that's 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 his room. <laughs> what, what, what? That's his room. The one that the guards were inside of. He told you like he was on the end of the he said it was on the bottom of the second floor. He, he said that he recognized that as like the last room. I, I think we should take a minute to gather our thoughts. I don't know how long we can actually sit still. <laughs> uh, he looks and he goes actually here are either the two spells that can touch the so I would say you can probably duck back into that room you came out of, and if you want to take a short rest back in there, you probably can. Yeah. Would, would like to do that? I mean, as, as far as you know, that you you just see the thing on the wall. Yeah. Sure. You're lucky because I really wanted to go tripping in there. I was up there. Oh, you got that. That's smart. The old man says rest. Fine. No fun. Go back to the room. Wait, wait, we can wait there. In one of my... Eight, seven, one. After that, four. Four slots back. Wait, yeah, how do you figure that out? Well, we have a thing as with... Yeah, wizards get it. I don't know what you do. Oh. We have an arcane. Yeah. Okay. If I will take two of my second spell slots back. Uh, three mm-hmm. slots. Nope. Yeah, I think we should missing one. Alright. Alright, so bad. I'm only missing three people because of that rule. Oh, right. Which is kind of why I did it. Okay. Yeah, you can take Those it. shaped forms are really like damage sponges. Yeah. They're fantastic. Basically what they are. Like, if you, like, us with our permanently lowered hit points would have been screwed, but yeah. that only affected your dire wolf. Yeah. yeah. He's awesome. So, you guys, like, finish your yeah. short rest? Yeah, we'll Because I like the mayor of the entire Nothing really crazy happens. Um, you guys are like, you need those, those thumbs. You have to face him. Prepare yourself for the worst. This place just gets worse and worse. Yeah. And he goes, pick the wrong yeah. way, quit drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you and me both. 